good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Prayer from St. Morgan Church this morning on the 27th of July. Where did July go? We're already nearly in August. Um, the weather is a lot cooler here, and uh, I'm certainly enjoying that a bit, although it was rather cold last night uh, in bed. So um, there are some swings and roundabouts there when it gets very cold at night instead of very hot. Um, so good morning to all of you who are joining us for this service, uh, to Val and to Barbara and Charlie and to Pat and to Moira and to Celia and to Ange. So, uh, oh, who's joining us from St. James Piccadilly? Oh, preferring us to St. James's service. That's very high praise indeed, Ange. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. I wonder what the weather like, weather is like in London today. Um, I've put the link to the service into the, uh, into the chat window, so if you want to follow along by um, using that link, you can, or else I'm sure that you have the app on your device by now if you like to follow along that way, or else, as usual, you can just listen as we praise and worship God together. This morning, we are celebrating uh, a person called Brooke Foss Westcott, who was a bishop and a teacher of the faith who died in 1901. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. He was born in 1825, and he was first ordained and then became a master at Harrow School. Whilst there, he published a series of scholarly works on the Bible, his expertise eventually leading to his election as Regius Professor of Divinity at the University of Cambridge in 1870. So not a dim person, as you can probably tell. With Fenton Hort and J.B. Lightfoot, he led a revival in British biblical studies and theology. He became influential too in the field of Anglican social thought and was significant in the founding of the clergy training school in Cambridge uh, which is now known as Westcott. It was renamed to Westcott House in his memory. In 1890, he was consecrated Bishop of Durham, where he died on this day in the year 1901. So there we are. We're celebrating a uh, famed biblical scholar um, who also founded Westcott House, the, one of the uh, main clergy training houses, training colleges uh, in this country. So now let's turn to our service sheets if we're going to follow along. Oh, good morning to you, Chris, as well, and to Anne, also joining us this morning. We now turn to our service sheet um, and begin our worship of God together. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the works of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 32. Happy the one whose transgression is forgiven 
and whose sin is covered. Happy the one to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, and in whose spirit there is no guile. For I held my tongue, my bones wasted away through my groaning all the day long. Your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up like the drought in summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I did not hide. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all the faithful make their prayers to you in time of trouble. In the great water flood, it shall not reach them. You are a place for me to hide in. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Be not like horse and mule which have no understanding, whose mouths must be head with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great tribulations remain for the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true in heart. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Psalm 36 Sin whispers to the wicked in the depths of their heart. There is no fear of God before their eyes. They flatter themselves in their own eyes, that their abominable sin will not be found out. The words of their mouth are unrighteous and full of deceit. They have ceased to act wisely and to do good. They think out mischief upon their beds and have set themselves in no good way. Nor do they abhor that which is evil. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, shall save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God! All mortal flesh shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the abundance of your house. They shall drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. O continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me, nor the hand of the ungodly thrust me away. There are they fallen, all who work wickedness. They are cast down and shall not be able to stand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Amen. And now Jackie, who's here with me in the church, is going to read our first reading for us. First readings from Ezekiel chapter 33, beginning at the first verse. The word of the Lord came to me. O mortal, speak to your people and say to them, If I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take one of their number as their sentinel, and if the sentinel sees the sword coming upon the land, and blows the trumpet, and warns the people, then if any, any who hear the sound of the trumpet do not take warning, and the sword comes and takes them away, their blood shall be upon their own heads. 
They heard the sound of the trumpet and did not take warning. Their blood shall be upon themselves. But if they had taken warning, they would have saved their lives. But if the sentinel sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, so that the, ple the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any of them, they are taken away in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at the sentinel's hand. So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back. Turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? And you, mortal, say to your people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not save them when they transgress. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, it shall not make them stumble when they turn from their wickedness. And the righteous shall not be able to live by their righteousness when they sin. Though I say to the righteous that they shall surely live, yet if they trust in their righteousness and commit iniquity, none of their righteous deeds shall be remembered. But in the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, yet if they turn from their sin and do what is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give back what they have taken by robbery, and walk in the statutes of life, committing no iniquity, they shall surely live, they shall not die. None of the sins that they have committed shall be remembered against them. They have done what is lawful and right, they shall surely live. Yet your people say, the way of the Lord is not just, when it is their own way that is not just. When the righteous turn from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. And when the wicked turn from their wickedness and do what is lawful and right, they shall live by it. Yet you say, the way of the house, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, I will judge all of you according to your ways. Thank you, Jackie. <clears throat> we continue with our canticle, A Song of Peace. Spirit of God, teach us your ways that we may walk in the paths of peace. Come, let us go up to the mountain of God, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For the law shall go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God shall judge between the nations and shall mediate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, 
neither shall they learn war any more. O people of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Spirit of God, teach us your ways, that we may walk in the paths of peace. Our second reading is from the Epistle of James, from chapter 2, verse 14 onwards. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I, by my works, will show you my faith. You believe that God is one. You do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you senseless person, that faith without works is barren? Was not our ancestor Abraham justified by works when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was brought to completion by the works. Thus the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. Likewise, was not Rahab the prostitute also justified by works when she welcomed the messengers and sent them out by another road? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the paths of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. We say together the words of the Gospel Canticle, the Benedictus. In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of his of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. 
In your tender compassion, O God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. So the letter from James, especially chapter 2, um, pretty infamous in uh, theological circles <clears throat> for its argument that faith without works is dead. And of course that argument has been the core of um, disagreements um, in the church for uh, centuries now, especially between the uh, Protestant and Reformed churches um, who focused on uh, faith being the most important part uh, that saves us, and also the Catholics who were accused of making works uh, by far the most important, even to the extreme of Catholics being accused of saying it's works entirely and faith is irrelevant, whereas the Protestants and Reformed churches were accused of saying that faith is entirely the only important thing and works are irrelevant. Um, and uh, taking a view on the letter of James, depending on which side of that argument you are on. But of course, I think James is saying that both are required. And uh, I think um, in recent years, Protestant churches and Catholic churches have um, come together to understand that uh, um, both are unified together. So um, when uh, performing works, you are demonstrating your faith, as James says, and if you have faith, that will naturally lead to works. And if it doesn't, then you didn't have faith. So the two are always united and uh, irresistibly um, combined. And uh, you can't really have one uh, without having the other in some form. So I think uh, James really is trying to resist the temptation for some people to say, but we believed what the message is, that, uh, whatever the message is that they were taught. And therefore, we don't have to do anything else. We just, you know, prove that we believe by coming to church on Sunday and that's it. And James is really saying, no, that's not it. You actually have to uh, care for your neighbour, uh, love your neighbour and uh, serve them to prove that you actually do have faith because just saying the words isn't enough. But I think most people uh, now agree with that uh, statement. So uh, perhaps James has finally uh, won through in what he was trying to say to the very first churches in Jerusalem. So let's now uh, remind ourselves of God's love for us as we pray uh, for our nation and for ourselves and for the world. Heavenly Father, It is so easy to forget your presence among us. We see the beauty of your creation wherever we turn. And yet we forget the one who made it. We know the joys of loving and being loved, and yet we forget the one who created love and showed us what it looks like. Touch our hearts, beloved Father. Soften our emotions. Help us to forgive one another and ourselves. May our faith be strong. May our works be good. We give thanks for all the blessings of our lives.
those things we recognised as blessings at the time, and those things we only realised were blessings later. And Father, comfort us in our suffering and in our pain. Remind us that you carry us through our lives in your arms. Father, we lift up to you all those we love and care for and name them in our hearts. We remember those especially who have been bereaved. All families and friends who have lost those they love. May those who have departed rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for our world, for all the many difficult, overwhelming problems that we see. That feel powerless to do anything about. Help us to have faith that all will be well, but also inspire us to find ways to do the works to make all things well. Almighty Lord and everlasting God, we beseech you to direct, direct, sanctify and govern both our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that through your most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. To our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Thank you to everyone who's joined us for this service of morning prayer. Um, I hope that uh, whatever you are doing this day or this week, it is uh, 
lovely and uh, enjoyable and uh, rewarding, I offer you the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those you love and care for this day and always. Amen. So thank you again and uh, I look forward to uh, sit well. I think Helen will see you on Thursday morning at nine o'clock for morning prayer here again. Um, whatever else you're doing this week, I hope that it's a very good one. So until Thursday, uh, oh, tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock, we're having our online coffee Zoom uh, trans transferred from Monday. So if you want to come and join in with Wednesday coffee Zoom, uh, drop me a line if you don't know the, um, how to get on or I'll send the link in the usual Facebook group. So until then, or until Thursday, farewell for now. Bye-bye.